Good day fellow teachers. In this video we are going to talk about the P1 English Literacy lesson and in particular about the first part of each day's lesson, the weekly song. Singing songs is a core component of Mango Tree's P1 English teaching model. Singing allows learners to practice their vocabulary and pronunciation in an active participatory learning environment. The songs are taught first as a whole language, teaching the entire song at once. Then they are also taught from the bottom up, teaching the songs one line at a time. Songs are always taught using I do, we do, you do method. The teacher first introduces the new song and models it for the learners. Then the class sings it together. Later in the week, as a continuous assessment activity, individual learners and small groups of learners present the song to their classmates. The songs have been tailored to match the weekly lesson plans. Each song includes some of the vocabulary and structures of the week and helps children learn them faster. Each week, children learn a new song. You can find the song of the week along with the step-by-step -step instructions for teaching it in your teacher's guide. The songs use specific vocabulary words, but they are designed so that you can change the words to incorporate more weekly vocabulary words or revision words. You can be creative and challenge your learners. This is term one week 11. The theme of this week is the human body and health. And the sub theme is parts of the body and their functions. So our song of the week is head and shoulders, which practices naming a number of body parts. Let's watch how Semi from Abay Primary School teaches the songs during the English literacy lesson every day. Song activities take place in the beginning of each lesson. This is a fun way to energize the class and motivate learners. On Monday, the teacher introduces the sub-theme of the week and explains the general meaning of the song to learners in level now. Isha biti wano na nukopi kum dul kum wa kere yot kum wa jote wini mom. Kuna nukopi kum ngo. Kum wa kere yot kum wa. Eh, donga mani ni wano wer wer ame kuwa hukopi kum dul kum wa wano tike re dul kum wa papa jote wini mom. Ti wi wa ti kakwe no ti tien wa ti apopat. Don mi ti ringi ti te wini wini mom. Where one eat your good do we what a good do we go what a good do chong what a good booty and what we mom? It is important that children not only learn the song but also learn the meaning of the song. This helps them later to identify the vocabulary and structures in the song. Head, shoulder, knees, and toes, knees, and toes, knees, and toes, head, shoulder, knees, and toes, ears. Eyes, nose, and mouth. She first sings the song alone, modeling the song for learners. This is the I do portion of the lesson. Notice that Semi demonstrates the actions as he sings. Each song has actions connected to it. This is called TPR or Total Physical Response. We use TPR to help children learn in a kinesthetic way. By creating actions associated with the song, it is easier for them to remember the words. It also draws their attention to the vocabulary words. Well, it's important to mime the action in the songs to the learners. One, because it helps the learners to know what the song is all about. Two, it also helps to activate, actively, in, actively involve the learners into learning that song. Another one also helps also the learners to easily identify the, 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 the vocabularies that are in 
the song. For example, maybe when a song is maybe talking about some action like driving, as you mime, it just automatic, it, it automatically goes into the brain of the learners that, it, oh, this one is driving, this one is riding. So, miming is very important. A joke that you, you wear. Eh, hey, I today win kitana work, you know, work kitana work. So, Lee win head, shoulder, knees, and toes. Aya. Songs are taught using a rot, repetitive method. This means that each song is learned in the same way. Pupils always learn by repeat after me, singing after the teacher line by line. And that song helps me as a teacher now to gradually introduce the sub theme to the learners. Later also will help me to introduce the vocabularies, the structures, and all those competences needed. The young learners, they, 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 they naturally like songs. So anything that they learn in, in, the, in the song form is actually very fun for them. That is why I was saying it's very good because they will be learning and as well be just playing with their learning. So it makes that learning very real for them and they also learn, they own that learning because they are singing, not knowing that they are also learning. So when it now comes to the actual teaching, you know, just, you just do a bit of guiding because they, they shall have already learned all the, those key information you want to teach through the songs, the vocabulary, the structures. While singing the song with the learners, the teacher distributes the pupil primers. On Thursday, the teacher hands out chalk and slates instead. Head, shoulder, knees and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. As the week progresses, learners stop repeating after the teacher and start singing with the teacher. This is the we do teaching method. You know, with the songs, even a, even a slow learner or fast learner, they learn that, they almost learn the song at the same face. So singing makes that, those vocabularies to remain in their brain because whenever they just, just start singing the song, they recall back the, the vocabularies and as well the structures. Apart from miming, we can as well use Pixar card. As they, as they sing and they mention a vocabulary, the teacher can sew. Like that, you can see how we incorporate the song, the Pixar cards, and the, the, the actions together to make learners fully learn the vocabularies and structures we want in that week. Each Friday is an assessment day that assesses children's overall competence with the current week songs, vocabulary, and structure, and dialogue. First the class sings together, then the teacher assesses the learners based on the song-based continuous assessment activities. This is the you do method. Johnny, you know me to give him can give na binu where where kuni poro kita me wuki wana uti where poro kiri chia ni winyer mo eh a Tim Marion, Gwel Janet, a Kelo Semi, a Dong Miriam. Johnu do ya binu kai him kai ne a Pio Cinderella. Okay. Aya, are you ready? Yes. Okay, one, two, three, begin. This week, the assessment activity calls for pairs or small groups to sing each verse of the song and mime the actions. This week, SEMI uses a continuous assessment monitoring form to make note of whether or not learners are able to complete the activity correctly. She should have already assessed other learners earlier in the week. Assessment actually is the part of teaching. 
and for, uh, for the teacher who does not carry assessment, I think it's not a good teacher because as a teacher you have to know how your learners are progressing with what you are teaching them. Our teacher's guide is organized in such a way that we don't get difficulties in, uh, in finding the, 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 what we call the, the target area for assessment. When they learn those songs, we know that they, are, we, they, they, they also know all the vocabulary start in that week. So the best way we do to assess the learners, the learners' competence in singing is one, I can ask a group of learners now to go in front of the class to sing the entire song to the rest of the learners, as the rest of the learners listen. I just go to my camp form and continuous assessment monitoring form, I record according to the, the child's ability. As they sing, I shall be observing at the one, the way they are uh, miming the song, if it is matching with the, what they are also singing, I also look at their confidence. Also look at their confidence, the way they are singing, and their fluency, the pronunciation, the pronunciation is in, in the song. All those are the areas I consider when I'm assessing the learners. Term one focuses on teaching learners simple one verse songs, which incorporate the vocabulary and structures of the week. The song is introduced on Monday, and by Friday, learners are expected to be able to sing alone. In term two, learners are taught two verse songs. During term two, each day of the week, the teacher focuses on different verses to practice the vocabulary and structures. In the teacher's guide, you'll find the breakdown of how to teach each specific song. It's a cold day today. It's a cold day today. In term three, learners are taught three verse songs. During term three, each day of the week, the teacher focuses on different verses to practice the vocabulary and structures. In the teacher's guide, you will find the breakdown of how to teach a specific song. Look at me, I'm driving, driving, driving. Look at me, I'm driving, my big bus. Now let's repeat the main points of this video. English songs are part of each English literacy lesson. They are a fun and participatory way to teach vocabulary and structures. Each week, the teacher's guide introduces a new song. Each song is tailored to match the weekly lesson plan and connects to the sub-theme of that week. Each song has actions connected to it, so children can learn the vocabulary in a kinesthetic way. Songs are taught by whole language and scaffolding in a repetitive way to build song knowledge. Every Friday, the teacher assesses learners' progress using the continuous assessment activity suggested in the weekly lessons of the teacher's guide. I hope you now understand how to better organize song activities during your daily English literacy lessons. And remember, you don't have to be the best singer to be the best teacher. Thank you for your attention. Have a good lesson.